going. I'm going to slap one on here. This is the Keith Larson Show. Life moves pretty fast. You don't stop and look around once in a while. You could miss it. I was just looking around, uh, going through some past conversations. I don't remember Gerald Salente predicting the trend of the Panthers repeating as the NFC South champions. I don't, I don't think he did. <laughs> News Talk 1110, 99.3 FM, WBT. Keith Larson, second hour today, first day back after vacation. Next hour, see, we're, we're getting caught up on uh, a lot of our prognosticators. Next hour, Aaron Schatz, who predicted that the Panthers would go from first to worst. He was wrong about that. He predicted they would only win six games. He was pretty close on that. That's next hour, Aaron Schatz from ESPN and the NFL Outsider. But right now, here he is. We talk with him on my first day back from vacation. Whenever that is, each year, for the last several years, we've dialed up. The, the trends genius, I call him a trends genius. He's the, uh, he's the guy, the publisher of the Trends Journal is what the publication is actually uh, called. And, and primarily, he's involved in, in a trend study with, with and for businesses and governments and organizations and, and things. This is what he does, assesses and helps them look for trends out there in the country and the planet and stuff. It's not like the amazing Kreskin or anything like that. But that's what he does, Gerald Salente, and here he is uh, back with us for another first day back chat. Gerald, how you doing? Um, well, thanks for having me. By the way, I don't do weather or sports. <laughs> <laughs> I don't forecast either. Gee, why not? Uh, it's hard enough doing doing uh, trend forecasting. You know, they're always the wild cards, so uh, it, it, it makes it makes it very difficult. Well, that's why I, I say a trend is not the, the same thing as a uh, prediction or when people say or, you know, when the, the, the psychics, you know, in the checkout counter news every year, they're out there and they say, oh, Kim Kardashian's going to have triplets or something like that. That's not what you're about. No, what we look is the current events and how uh, decisions that are made form patterns and and what the expectations are. So when we look at the markets, for example, and you're seeing what's going on now. You know, the markets were taking a hit at the beginning of the year when you were way on vacation, <laughs> and uh, and now they're back. Why? Well, the Fed announced that they're going to, well, we're not going to raise interest rates maybe till 2016. So they're keeping the Ponzi scheme going. Do you know the last time the Fed raised interest rates? Uh, it has to be years now. 2006. And what this is really, it's hurting all of us little people. Because in the old days, people used to be able to have a thing called a savings account, and they would put money in the bank. And they would get an interest on that money that was greater than the inflation rate. Now with interest rates basically at zero, uh, the Fed rate's 025 you put your money in the bank, you get nothing. So all this is doing, it's juicing the stock markets because it goes back to what our trends are. One of them is, and this isn't capitalism. Let's stop calling it that. Four words killed it. Too big to fail. So what is it? Well, we call it bankism. And matter of fact, the story that we're writing in the Trends Journal about is being written by Nomi Prinz, who has a book out there that's very popular called All the President's Bankers. So here's the deal. Tell you what, Keith, you're one of the big guys, too big to fail. I've got a deal for you. I'm the Fed. I'll loan you money at 0.25%. That's right. And you could load it out for anything that you could get. And don't forget to get those suckers with those credit cards. Yeah, charge them anything that you want. Yeah, my buddy Jimmy Carter, he was the first one that got rid of the usury rates. So we could, you, and, and you get payday loans, anything that you want, 150, 200%, rip them off. That's bankism. Number two, you see all why the markets are going up? Take a look, half of it, over half of it. Companies are buying back their stock. Why? Hey, I'm a big company. I could borrow money for almost nothing. I'll borrow that money, buy back my stock, and drive up the price. 
and then I'll sell when I want to, and I'll make a lot of dough. So you can't, in, in forecasting, one of the other trends we have, you can't predict the future. Nobody can. There's these wild cards. It's wild that the Federal Reserve is doing this, and it's not only the Federal Reserve. You go over there in Japan, and they got a different name for it. Let's call it Abenomics. How do you say that in Japanese? Well, what they do is they're pumping money in to the tune of the equivalent of the United States pumping in $3 trillion a year through the banks to prop up their economy. Yeah, but we're okay with this, Gerald, because when, when you talk about the savings accounts have, have lousy interest rates. Yeah, that's true. And so people go, don't go to those accounts for savings anymore because you can't make any kind of a return there. But we all love the low interest rates and it fuels the consumer economy. And we just don't pay attention to the fact that it, it is sort of building a house of cards out there and that it is, in effect, kind of printing money. It feels good and it tastes good for now, this, this candy, this crack cocaine. It only feels good and tastes good to the people that are selling it. Because everybody living the real life knows what it feels like. Here's a number, and anybody could Google it up because it's so unbelievable. People say, oh, this Salenti's full of baloney. He's making this stuff up. Eighty-five people in the world, 85, have more money than 3.5 billion. That's half the population. Yeah, Google it up. USA Today will come out, I think it's like November 14th, 2014, and in other papers. A story just came out yesterday. Most Americans are one paycheck away from the street. Approximately 62% of Americans have no emergency savings for things such as a $1,000 emergency room visit or a $500 car repair. And it goes on. Look at the, the Pew Research Center study that came out two weeks ago. The gap between the rich and the poor in the United States right now is greater than it was during the Gilded Age. But the difference even back then was that the robber barons, at least they were making things. They were building railroads. They had steel plants. You know, they, they, were, they were the captains of industry. Now you got... The Wall Street rob The Wolf of Wall Street. Now you got arbitrage, buying and selling money um, is, is what you have. Gerald That's Salente, have. our uh, trend genius, is here. And Gerald, see, on, on a very superficial level, when we see that, and, and even if we say, well, wealthy people are getting wealthier, see, and, and if you say very simplistically, because I'm a believer in free enterprise and capitalism, well, hey, they're out there, they're taking a risk, they're investing, they're gaining, that's fine, that's all good. But a big part of what's going on is, I like your term, bankism, and it's bankism and stock marketism, and, and they're using governments to, to fund their growth off the back of uh, taxpayers and others. You got it. You said it perfectly. And again, this is not capitalism. Four words killed it. Too big to fail. Period. Paragraph. I won't even get in a discussion with anyone about it. You, you deny those four words, and then you know, knock yourself out. You know, take some more uh, whatever drugs you're on. Because in capitalism, there's no such thing as too big to fail. Well, there shouldn't, there shouldn't be. And, there isn't. And, it's bankism. It's a takeover. And it's not only in the United States. It's global, as I'm saying. In Japan, I got one for you. How about what's going on in Europe? They have negative interest rates. Yeah, I'm not sure how... Uh, well, that means that you put your money of... in the bank <laughs> and you have to pay them to keep it there. Yeah, the mattress looks pretty good at that point. Hey, Gerald, um, one thing. Okay, so uh, wait, what's the website where people can... Uh, that You can just Google in uh, Google News or anywhere, Gerald Salente Trends Journal. Uh, what's your website? trendsjournal.com trendsjournal.com and they could also we have we just did a five and a half hour conference of all the top trends of 2015 so besides the trends journal they, they also have an opportunity to purchase that as well i have to uh, take issue with one of your other trends that i know and we just have a minute here but on on one you talk about selfie journalism yes what it means is that th there's no journalism left all these mergers and acquisitions, there are, no, there are no feet on the beat. This is a fact. I was CEO. His name is Derek Osinenko. He was the former editor-in-chief of Gannett News Service. This is a guy that's been there, and he's been around. We're Dow Jones, all of them. They're cutting back everybody. 
So what we're looking at is a new growth in journalism. There's a new opportunity is what we're saying. As all these mergers and acquisitions are happening, and they're cutting back news staff, closing copy desks, there's now a new opportunity to start creating the new community newspapers. And, there, and whether it's online or on paper, there's opportunity now that doesn't – that because of the consolidation and, – and not only in the newspaper industry, you have six companies that basically own the communications industry. There, there's a lot of truth in that and a lot of truth in the knuckleheadism of the selfie journalism and these approaches. But I'll just tell you, those they are going to be their own defeat in some cases. We, we had a TV station here in Charlotte over the last year, year and a half that has tried this approach uh, where it's it's a lot of young, inexperienced one man band people. And they're they're always trying to get people to send them their videos and the stories and this whole thing, and they try to do it without big-time reporters and news anchors. And you know what has occurred? They, they've they got almost zip for ratings. Oh, oh, yeah. The, no, the I news agree director who launched it has, has left and has gone on. So those, those schemes, there's a point at which they're going to burst. Oh, yeah. No, we're not talking about that. What we're talking about is this is an opportunity now to recreate what's already. I agree with you 100%. Everybody thinks they know what they're doing, and they're out there just putting this stuff out there. What we're saying is now's the opportunity to fill the gap, because the gap is huge. And there are still a lot of people that want news, real news, and the newspapers aren't doing it. If you're in Charlotte or you're in uh, Sea Caucus and you have a local newspaper by a chain, it's going to look identically alike, and maybe they'll have eight stories in there about local, and the rest of them are patterned at, at, from, a, from a centralized location, maybe in Austin, Texas, that are putting the whole paper together. They're more and more like that now. Gerald Salente, the Trends Journal. Hey, Gerald, always appreciate stealing your time here uh, early in the year. Oh, always great being on with you. All the best. All right, thanks, Gerald.